are now joined by UFC middleweight Eric Anders, and we'll take our first set of questions from Jay Anderson with Kate Side Press. Jay, you have been unmuted. Looks like we have some issues there. Let's jump to Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Cypress. Hello, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, and yourself? I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, Eric, can we go back a little bit? Can you describe what it was like to go through that whole sequence on Fight Island? You're there, they give you a fight, and after all that, it still doesn't happen? Um... Yeah, you know, I uh, took a fight on short notice when I was out there on the island. Not much to do, not much space to move around and stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. That's on me. You know, I uh, I accepted the fight, knowing there would be a challenge. And, uh, you know, I had some health issues. And, uh, you know, they pulled me from the fight. So, you know, lesson learned at uh, 85, it would probably be better to, uh, you know, have time for a full camp like I did this one and not take a short notice. But at 2.05, I can make 2.05 in, you know, just a few days. So, you know, I'll still take short notice 2.05 fights. After being a part of the Florida card, being around with your team on Fight Island, how's the experience of fighting in Las Vegas and just kind of the base camp they kind of have set up over there? Oh, um, man, it's, it's uh, you know, for the circumstances, it's been good, man. It hasn't been too bad, you know. Um, you still go to the PI and move around and, you know, go outside and see the sun a little bit. So um, I've only been here since Tuesday evening. So, you know, it's really only been just a few days, so it's not even that bad. Um, you know, probably by the time I get sick of it, the fight will be over and, you know, I'll be out and about in Vegas anyway. So it'll be all good. So fighting in an empty arena is certainly an experience. I want to go back, though. You've played college football. Can you imagine what a football game in an empty stadium would be like by comparison? Uh, man, you guys would be surprised at how the players talk to each other on the field if you could hear it like you can in, uh, you know, in the cage. Um, but, you know, everybody's got to play and, and fight under the same circumstances. So, you know, it's... Uh, almost irrelevant, you know, you got to show up, show out, and, uh, you know, collect your checks. Hey, thank you, Eric, and best of luck. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Martina Saluj with IndiCage.pl. Hello, Eric, how are you? Good, and yourself? Thank you very much, I'm good. Uh, Eric, just a couple of questions also about your uh, former opponents. Uh, I would like to ask you about Thiago Santos and his fight uh, last week with Alexander Rakic. Were you surprised with his performance and this loss? Um, man, Rakic is a very skilled guy, you know. Um, you know, he's big, he's skilled, he can do everything. He can strike, he can grapple. So that's a, definitely a fight that you have to approach with caution. And, um, you know, maybe he did that, you know, I don't know. You know, I think, you know, when you're coming off uh, and when you tear all the ligaments in your knee and, you know, you're coming back and he's a dynamic striker, athletic dude, you know, surely that injury had to uh, play a role in, in the way he fights. You know, it's even, even if, like, he doesn't think about it, even on a subconscious level, um, I'm sure it plays a factor, so... I think that he can overcome and bounce back and, uh, you know, hopefully win the belt someday. Mm -hmm. After this Saturday, Israel Adesanya has a first loss in his record. Do you think that Jan Blachowicz showed to middleweights how to fight with the champ? No, not at all. You know, <laughs> he's still in the strut with uh, Adesanya. We've seen all the guys that Adesanya's fought in middleweight who's tried to do so, and it did not work out well for them. You know, the only time he wrestled was in, like, you know, just little spurts here and there in, like, the second round, I think, and then the third and fourth round when he was tired. But, you know, uh, he definitely had a size, strength, and, and probably a power advantage as well. So, you know, um, you know, I think he's only, like, 225 his weight. And, uh, you know, I think there's middleweights that are that, you know, that same size as uh, Jan. So, 
Man, you know, I also think that Adesanya is the fastest evolving uh, fighter in the sport. You know, we've seen guys try to take him down. He's fought wrestlers like Brunson who couldn't do it. Um, I think Marvin Vittori's probably had the most success against him, and you know, that was in the third round uh, that he wrestled Adesanya. But since then, you know, outside of that Jan fight, you know, we really haven't seen people be able to take him down and hold him down if they do get him down. Of course. Uh, your last fight was against Krzysztof Jotko from Poland also. Uh, what kind of a lesson did you learn from this fight with him? Um, you know, cage control is not, not enough to win a fight. You know, you got to do something when you're in those clinches, you know. He uh, landed more significant strikes, um, but, you know, I still controlled, you know, I think it was like, I can't remember what the stats were, but you know, I had him up against the cage the whole time, didn't, you know, uh, land very much offense. So, you know, I think that uh, was a difference in the fight. And, um, you know, not my preferred method of uh, fighting, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And, um, you know, I think Saturday would be a little bit different. Of course. Last one from me. What part of Darren Stewart's octagon game is the most dangerous, in your opinion? Uh, he's a striker, man, you know. Uh, I think the most underrated part of his game is his stamina. You know, you really barely see him take a deep breath, and, you know, he keeps throwing hard and heavy, you know, all three rounds. So, you know, something I'm aware of, and uh, we'll definitely have to take into account and in consideration in my plan of attack on Saturday. Thank you very much, sir. Have a great fight. Appreciate it. We'll take our next set of questions from Alistair Bishop with the MMA Republic. Eric, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. And yourself? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. Uh, you mentioned earlier in the week uh, you sense a fight of the night. Uh, it seems lately guys are pushing for the performance of the night because uh, a fight of the night usually means damage on, on both ends. Is, is, is that something you encourage? I mean, no, I don't think any fighter likes to take damage, but, you know, we've seen in the past that I'm durable, he's durable. Uh, neither one of us have ever been knocked out, so... You know, I've got, you know, uh, yeah, you know, if it happens, it happens. But obviously, I like to go out there and get a flawless victory. But, you know, finding a guy like Darren Stewart, seeing his opponents after they fight him, very difficult task. But, uh, you know, um, I think this is a, a fight that the fans will really like. This is what they like, two big guys standing in the middle swinging. So, you know, uh, it'll be a fun one for me, fun one for the fans. And, uh, you know, I think that Darren relishes these moments as well. And and with that in mind, would you say stylistically, these these are the kind of fights that, that you're looking for at this point of your career? These are the kind of fights that are giving that extra push in your camp? Yeah, 100%. You know, all the guys that I've lost to have been point fighters, uh, with the exception of, you know, uh, my two light heavyweight fights, uh, my two light heavy, you know, Thiago and, and uh, Khalil Roundtree. Everybody else is just kind of, you know, you know, just point fight it and uh I don't think that that is in either uh Darren or I's you know fighting style or DNA you know I think that we're both fighters and uh yeah that's what we're going to get in there and do you mentioned the, the dip in at 205 um wh where are you more comfortable at the moment 205 middleweight or what are the pros and cons for you between the two classes Man, you know, um, I definitely mentally, I think that middleweight um, is where I'm most prepared uh, just because the fight is always on my mind, no matter what, you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of Whataburger. Shout out to Whataburger. You know, I want Whataburger. I can't have it, <laughs> you know. Uh, but at 205, you know, I may not get the double meat, double cheese, but I can get a single, you know what I'm saying? I might not get a large <laughs> onion rings, but I can get a medium, you know? So, um, you know, the fight is just always on my mind. Um, at 205, you know, I have a little more, obviously a lot more leeway in my diet and, uh, I don't have to run as much or, you know, do these kind of things. So, you know, at 205, whenever I leave the gym, you know, I kind of leave the fight in the gym. And uh, at middleweight, you know, it's, it's like my shadow. Wherever I go, wherever I go, uh, the fight is with me. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Um, 
I, I wanted to ask you, you're venturing almost into a, a veteran type of space now. Looking back, what did you say has been the, the hardest transition to MMA from, from football? Um, movement and footwork, you know. I think that, uh, you know, linebacker is not really a skilled position. You know, everything is straightforward. And uh, if you watch the way I fight, that's really the only direction that I move. So, um, I think now, you know, my movement and footwork has gotten a lot crisper, a lot better. My strike count, uh, is, you know, will be a lot higher now. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't have to play rock'em, sock'em robots anymore. Um, and that's just kind of that. You know, football mentality, you know, that's what it is. You know, when you play D-line, outside linebacker, everything is forward. And, you know, kind of like a FU mentality, you know. So you know, I definitely approach fighting the same way, you know, it's, uh, me or him. So, you know, uh, yeah. Last one for me. Uh, I, I saw you having quite a bit of fun with the uh, Gordon Ryan, Andre Galvao scenario. Um, who, who do you think wins if that fight ever happens? MMA? No, 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 you're uh, grappling. Oh, man, you know, I, I think that Gordon Ryan definitely has the the mental upside, you know. I think Andre Galvao might be a little shook when you get slapped twice and, and don't retaliate <laughs> or anything. Especially, it's like, you know, they weren't in Walmart. You know, the police weren't going to get called. There's, like, no risk of legal repercussions. So, you know, I think if there's any time that you're going to get slapped and retaliate that would be the time so um i don't know like uh stature wise how they you know would they be in the same weight class or whatever i know galvao's fought mma before and gordon ryan has talked about fighting mma so man at, at this point i have to go with gordon ryan man galvao gotta be a little <laughs> shit awesome thank you so much man best of luck thank you We'll take our last set of questions from Jordan Ellis with Loki Kevin. Hi, Eric. Um, I just want to ask you about the layoff. You know, a lot of people will be focusing on Leon Edwards today and his, you know, almost two-year layoff. But, you know, 10 months for yourself, it, that's still quite a long way, while out the cage. So how, how are you feeling? How have you dealt with it? Uh, man, you know, to be honest, it's probably been the best thing for me. You know, I feel rejuvenated physically and mentally. Um, this is... Probably the first and only fight ever, amateur or, or pro, that I've gone into with no injuries or nagging, you know, aches or pains or whatever, and going in 100%. And you know, that just really doesn't happen in this sport. So, you know, out of those 10 months, I probably had to sit down and couldn't train for six of them. So, uh, you know, at the time, it was kind of like, you know, just bored, just, you know, just watching. And, uh, but in retrospect, it was probably the best thing for me. And what's it been like sitting on the loss of? See, it was a tough one against Yocto. Um, have you ever been able to flex on that, you know, and make some improvements coming into this one? Yeah, I've made a lot of improvements. Obviously, it's left a bad taste in my mouth uh, for the past 10 months. And it's, you know, always in the back of my mind, you know, the last fight being a loss. Uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, it's imperative that I go out there and, and get a victory uh, on Saturday. Yeah, and talking about Sati, it's Darren Stewart, and you were just saying you're expecting a fight of the night, and what would it mean, or how confident would you be of actually going in there and becoming the first man to, you know, TKO or KO Darren? Shit, I'm trying to take home both my checks, so, you know, it's always great, you know, and that's what I aim to do anyways, is finish fights, man. No one's in there trying to go fight 15 minutes, man. Hell no. Nah. So, if I can get in there and get the job done in a minute... Cool. If it does take the whole 15, cool. It's whatever. You know, I think my cardio is the best it's ever been. And uh, my skill set is the sharpest that it's ever been. I know that's cliche, and a lot of fighters say that, but and it really rings true when I say it. And just finally, um, 2020 weren't the best year for you, as we said, that loss and, and a sit out. What do you want from 2021? I'd like to fight three times, you know. Um, so, you know, go out there, get three wins, three finishes, uh, if possible. You know, these guys are tough, especially the guys I'm fighting now, you know. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, go out there. Starting with uh, Saturday night, go out there, get a finish, 
get a win, collect at least two, aim it for three checks, and, uh, you know, take it to the strip. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Eric. Thank you. All right, thank you.